This is Daily Armenia, CivilNet's daily news digest. Here's what you need to know today. After a long boycott of Russian-led summits, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan left for St. Petersburg today to participate in the session of the Eurasian Economic Council and an informal summit of the Commonwealth of Independent States. According to the government's news service, the Eurasian Council meeting is scheduled for today, while the meeting of the CIS leaders takes place tomorrow. No other details have been released yet. This participation comes after a year of high-ranking Armenian officials refusing to take part in the meetings of Russian-led organizations amid deteriorating relations between the two countries. Armenia is set to assume the presidency of the Eurasian Union for 2024, and Armenian officials have stated previously that it should attend to take up this duty. Just last month, Pashinyan did not attend a session of the CSTO military alliance in Minsk. Russia has decried the suspension by Armenian authorities of radio broadcasts of the Russian state-run Sputnik news agency. This comes after a November 17th segment which was highly critical of Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan and his government's policies, presented by Russian commentator of Armenian descent Tigran Kesayan. His wife, Margarita Simonian, runs the Russian television network RT and last year was banned from entering Armenia. The suspension, which is set to last for 30 days, was initiated by Armenia's National Commission on Television and Radio radio, which described Kaseyan's statements as being mocking and derogatory about Armenia. The Russian embassy in Yerevan retorted that the move limited Armenians' right to receive information from a source of their choice and said that it served those who would like to break ties with Russia, a reference to the downturn in relations between the two countries this year. Kaseyan declared that the ban vindicated his report as correct. This was not the first example in recent months of a Russian state broadcaster attacking Pashinyan, while Armenian public television has seen an increasing number of figures is critical of Moscow invited on to its talk shows. The dissolution of the Artsakh government, scheduled for January 1st, appears to have been revoked. Artsakh President Samvel Shahramanyan announced at a meeting with officials on Friday that there is no document in the legal framework of the Republic of Artsakh that envisions the dissolution of state institutions. Shahramanyan emphasized the need to continue the work of the government in 2024 and instructed regional heads to continue inventorying the problems of forcibly displaced citizens and regularly submit them to the government. Shahramanyan's decree of September 28th issued in the midst of a mass exodus from the territory, stipulated that all of Artsakh's state institutions and organizations would cease on January 1st. This unilateral decision was heavily criticized as being illegal and baseless, a view which Shahramanian's new statement appears to endorse. Yet on the other hand, the move was not welcomed by officials in the Armenian government, with Parliament Speaker Alin Simonian among others lambasting it as undermining Armenia's security. Check out CivilNet's interview with Asian Development Bank Country Director for Armenia, Don Lambert, on the bank's new country partnership strategy to support Armenia's development goals. You'll gain insight into the bank's priorities and strategy for backing sustainable economic growth and reform across key sectors in the country. A link can be found in the video description and on our website. And finally, today's civil net number of the day is 785. That's the amount in millions of dollars of Artsakh's public and private debt to Armenia's financial system. The Armenian government has stepped in to cover this amount, with 70% of it being directly funded by the government, while in return the banks have agreed to write off the remaining 30%. Many displaced people from Artsakh are left with outstanding mortgages on properties they no longer have access to and so will likely default on. This not only causes them great financial hardship at an already difficult time, but would also have social impacts as it would severely hurt their credit rating. According to observers, Armenia's government is resorting to such an action to avoid the great risk now being posed to the national financial system, from the inability to service these loans and the mass defaults which would result. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.